Exams at this point is basically just a performance. They want to see how well you work under pressure. And performance only changes when pressure is part of the practice. You stop treating every question like it deserves equal attention. You actually can figure out almost immediately. And when you do this, you will unlock one part that I know a lot of students struggle with, which is trusting their first instincts. In an exam, time is not flexible. It keeps moving whether you are ready or not. If you always run out of time in exams, this video is for you. It is not because you didn't study hard enough and it's not even because you are bad at the subject. It happens because exams, they don't reward careful thinking the way that studying would. What you are rewarded for instead is decision making under pressure. So I want to show you a way to train that exact skill using past papers and without changing your entire study routine. Most people, they think that they're doing the right thing by doing past papers but what does that actually mean what to you mean is doing past papers comment down below it could be that you're sitting down and you're carefully going through the exam paper itself trying to get every single thing right and then you mark it and then you move on that kind of practice tells you what you know which is just studying the material regurgitating the information that you learned but you are not using them to train how you perform exams at this point is basically just a performance they want to see how well you work under pressure and performance only changes when pressure is part of the practice so the goal is not to do more past papers just the same way you've done before it's to do it in a way that forces your brain to adapt and this is where the system comes in instead of treating time as a background detail you want to use it as the main variable every mistake will now have a cost so it prevents you from making more mistakes in the future and at the same time it trains you to think faster as well as completing the exam faster because you're used to it it'll make sense in a second just stick with me here you're not going to be doing your exams or your past papers with emotions anymore and you're not going to be focusing on the grades you are going to be focusing on the minutes this method is how i train myself to be able to complete my exams that are two hours long and within 45 minutes or sometimes an hour i always finish my exams very very early which allows me to do the whole exam all over again usually two or three times until i am sure that every single one of my question is as best as I can make it. And my grades in chemical engineering in university is over 90% every single time. So let's say your exams is 90 minutes long. To prepare for it, you do a past paper with the full 90 minutes, no tricks, you just do it, you mark it, and then that's it. But instead of us leaving it there, we're going to change it up a bit and we're going to instead count how many marks you got wrong. Let's say you get six marks wrong. For every one wrong answer, you are then going to dock off one minute from the next past paper that you're going to do. So that means in the next past paper, you're only going to give yourself 84 minutes instead of the 90 minutes in full. And if on the next paper you get eight wrong, then you're going to dock it off from the original not from the 84 before, you're going to dock it off from the 90 and now it's going to be 82 minutes. But if you improve and you get three wrong, then you only have three minutes stopped off. The more you improve, the more time you have, basically. Honestly, for the first paper for me, I got like 45 out of 100, which means I had 55 minutes off from the next paper which was really scary for me but i just kept going with it i tried to see how much i can do how much i didn't do and honestly just by practicing this way my brain just adapted to it over time it took about eight past papers in order to do this perfectly in the first like eight past papers i was still like oh my god this is so scary i was getting a lot of questions wrong blah 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 and the pressure was there so i wasn't able to do it like perfectly the first go so don't expect that you will do it perfectly either again it took me eight past papers and once again, I am a slow learner, if you haven't guessed from my other videos. So it took me a long time to get used to it, but once I got used to it, my grade skyrocketed. The type of emotions that you'll get when you're doing this for the first time around will be one of the followings. And I'm saying this now because I find it super helpful to see how other people feel and if I can relate to that as well, which makes me feel like I'm not crazy in a way so at first it will feel uncomfortable you might feel rushed it's messy but that's completely normal very quickly however your brain will start to behave differently you stop treating every question like it deserves equal attention you actually can figure out almost immediately which questions needs the most attention and which questions don't which means you're gonna stop rereading questions over and over again just in case you stop going for perfection you just go for 
am I able to answer this? You then go for the perfection later on when you've already mastered your time techniques. And when you do this, you will unlock one part that I know a lot of students struggle with, which is trusting their first instincts. Have you ever done a multiple choice question exam and you get an answer? Let's say you say the answer is A in your mind, but then you second guess yourself and you change it to D, but the correct answer was A. That happens every single time with me for a multiple choice. I know a lot of my students have the same problem. I've talked to so many many students and they all have the same problem and that's because we struggle to believe our own thoughts when you do it this way you are training yourself to trust yourself more and you have less doubts over your mind and what your thoughts are and therefore less mistakes now i know what you're probably saying what about the questions that stops me in my tracks these are the parts of the exam that genuinely ruins the whole exam for me because if i'm stuck and i can't do anything about it it doesn't matter how many hours i sit on that exam desk and stare at the question I'm still not gonna know the answer and you almost know it but you don't quite know it in normal studying you would just sit there until it clicks but obviously you can't do that in the exam so during this training when you hit that feeling you want to give yourself an extra second to think about the possible solutions the way to do this is to just ask yourself is there any question that I've seen before that is similar to this anything like even if it's a tiny bit similar let's say you're given a question in I don't know, biology, and it's asking you, what is the process of respiration in a plant? And you don't remember specifically for respiration in a plant, but you kind of remember the one for humans or animals. You can kind of find a way to link the two together and then just create an answer out of it. Once again, you are not going for perfection here. You just want to see what type of answers you can regurgitate from your mind. And it doesn't have to be for that particular topic, just anything that relates if you are able to think on the fly, then you will be fine in the exam. And if you still can't figure it out, that's okay. Keep it empty. Skipping a question isn't a sign of weakness. I know a lot of you don't want to skip a question and that's completely fine when you're practicing. But in the exam, you don't want to skip a question at all because you could be getting marks that you would have missed just because you didn't trust your first instincts. So when you are practicing, yes, you can skip, but don't forget you're going to dock off those marks from your total time. And that is going to be a stress strategy on its own. This system will retrain your instincts when it comes to those skippable questions or those skipping questions because it teaches you to secure the marks first then come back when you have time left later to go over it again and have that extra time to think. You don't want to be stuck in just one question and not be able to climb that hill and then lose the rest of your time just because you couldn't answer that one and you lose all your marks. And that is genuinely how top scorers like me think. Now that you've completed all of that with each past paper that you do you want to resist the urge to then revise everything because i know that as soon as you get that past paper and you finish that past paper and you look at what you got wrong you're then gonna go okay i need to therefore revise topic blah 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 don't do that that is how you waste your time because what you want to do instead is to look for the patterns maybe you notice that every single time you get a long calculation question or a long essay that you need to write that is where you slow down that is where you lose the most marks or if you have a multi-step question, you have to think about it for three times longer than usual. That is the pattern that you want to focus on and you want to create an error log. So currently I'm doing this with my students for their upcoming exams in May and June. So we're already doing error logs right now and this is still six months ahead. With this error log, I basically just write down every single thing that I can think of that is a problem during the lesson when we are doing our practice together. And that is the same thing that you want to do because that is going to be useful information for you. It's day data that you can actually work with in order to improve going forwards so one of the errors would be like knowing the knowledge but not knowing how to link the knowledge together knowing the knowledge but not knowing how to apply the knowledge in the exam questions not knowing the command words not knowing no, not knowing the keywords from all of this i can then put together a plan of like okay if they don't know the command words then it's probably because I need to teach them the command words. In your case, it would be, I need to teach myself the command words. I need to search up what the command words are. I need to see it in the mark scheme itself. Is this a command word? Does this look like a command word? That would be things like describe, explain, state. Those are what we call as command words. So before the next paper, you want to spend time looking at your error log. I used to have a book like this. It's not the same one, but I used to have a book like this where I would write down every single mistake that I would have in every single past 
paper that I do. I also tag the past paper with post-its. Like these kind of post-its here, I would always stick them onto the past paper as well as onto my error log so that I know which color relates to what. So like for example, if I got a mistake in paper 2 of past paper 2021, I would tag it in pink and I would tag it in pink over here as well. So then I can see what the mistake is and if I want to see it further and see the rest of the question, I can look at the past paper again. So just before looking at your past paper, look at your error log, remind yourself what the mistakes were, go back into doing the past paper in the time conditions, and you'll be fine. Now don't forget one paper will not change anything. Like I said before, it took me eight past papers in order to get a hang of it. And by the 10th past paper, I was already getting grades that were so much higher than I used to before. We remember things easier when we see it at least three times. So the more practice that you do, the better it will be. I am notorious for doing as much past papers as I can because that was the only way that I figured out was really helpful for me when it comes to studying. It completely changed when I went to university. I, I couldn't I didn't have as much past papers to work with so I just did more general practice from like textbooks, chat GPT and just generating a lot of questions with like study fetch for example but doing as much practice as I can has always been the way to go for me because that is how my brain understands the information as well as understanding what the exam techniques are as well as practicing my time management. So what will happen then is that familiarity will then start to kill your exam anxiety and this is actually so insane because the day before my a-level chemistry exam the exam that will determine whether or not i go into university was literally the best exam i ever did because i was not worried at all genuinely the day before i wasn't nervous i was playing my wii with my friends i had a gathering in my house we were supposed to study together but not a single one of us was studying because we were so prepared we were so ready for this exam because we were doing this method so don't worry if one method hasn't been working for you keep trying and you'll find it just by doing this method doesn't mean that you'll know everything for the exam what changes is how you move through the paper itself you read faster you decide faster and you move on faster as well and that usually translates to more completed questions and fewer careless end of paper mistakes and that is how your time management will turn into your marks so time management isn't something you remember during an exam it is something that you train before it if running out of time has always been your weakness then this is going to be one of the most direct ways to fix it you're not going to be studying harder but you're going to apply pressure on purpose in order to be faster and better but yeah that's it if this helped don't forget to give me a like subscribe if you haven't yet and share with your friends that you think may find this helpful as well and if you want comment down below what kind of exam you've been preparing for i can adapt the system to fit your subject better so just let me know if you need any help with it and aside from that i'll see you in the next video join the smart side bye